All right, quiet and shit, everyone. Quiet and shit. Quiet. Quiet and the shit. This is the sound. This is the sound. This is the sound. 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 Last we left off, our here antagonists are heading towards the Duke of Gryffindor. Mm. So, are you making any stops along the way? Uh, yes. Uh, Eleanor is starving, so we're gonna stop and get some Gragenstadt. Mm, okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, You're probably gonna hate it, because guess what? It's still Guardian. To the Duke. Okay. Is no. there, like, a street vendor just selling Gragenstadt? Um, yeah, in, in the Duke's Quarter, yeah, there probably is. We'll just say that there's this, uh, guy, um named uh, Magis, and uh, he is a Darasani who is selling Grogenstadt. And it's just a, uh, it's basically like ye old ice cream truck. Uh, like, like, like not the truck, but like the cart, you know, that you see in like the, the parks and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's like heated with like a little bit of fire underneath it, and he kind of turns, and as you kind of walk up to him, he sort of shoots some more flame underneath, and the flame underneath the whole cart kind of shoots up a little bit, and you smell the wafting, berry-scented sort of smoke and milky egg kind of smell coming towards you. Look, I don't hate all of Stuttgarting culture. I just don't like aesthetically what they do. I don't like pastel. I don't like powder. I don't like red, the way they use it. There's just certain things that I don't like personally the food's great okay well you want to go some uh, excellent swordsman too you want Gragenstadt? yes yes you want Gragenstadt? how legit does this Gragenstadt look um like, as I'm he testing. opens the metal sort of uh sliding piece on top of the cart uh the smell wafts out towards you and it is milk and eggs and berries some spices Seems a little bit different than like a traditional Silts Guardian. It's like a little bit more spiced up with like some Darasani stuff, a little bit of a Marian spice you can smell in there. Oh, okay, that's It sounds fine. That's different, fine. yeah. Or it smells different, rather. Ooh, yeah. I would try this. A Marian stuff. I have not yeah. had proper. You, 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 you want a Magic Grass and Oh, good. He's Darasani? Yes. Oh, shit, I don't know that language. Okay. He says, uh, okay, uh, how many? And uh, what kind? There are multiple kinds. Uh, we have uh, a basic Gragenstadt, and then we have the uh, Fathersberry, and then we have the uh, Brotherberry. You know, sister, for years, I've only been eating stew. This is much better than Why? stew. Why? Why have you have. only been eating stew? Well, every now and then I would eat when we had port, but for the most part, the majority of my diet for years has been stew. You know I could have sent you money, right? No, it wasn't about money. It's just, if you're in the middle of the ocean, it's the only thing you can make. Sometimes fish, but it gets very plain. Yeah. yeah. And as you look at him, he's a um, shorter kind of man. He looks kind of young, maybe like, maybe even like 19. He has uh, shock red hair that's just kind of curly and all over the place. And a, uh, a red sort of mustache goatee kind of thing happening that's starting to grow in. He's got green eyes. Um, and that dark sort of uh, Darasani skin with his pointed Ooh. ears. He seems... He's half Darasani, half American. Yeah, he seems something <laughs> weird. Uh, a couple of combinations. There might even be some Scarlasian just in there. His accent is very distinctly um, Scarlasian with like some little Darasani tinges to it. But for the most part, he seems like, you know, born and raised in Gryffindale. So it's hard to keep your exact culture in Gryffindale. There's so much happening. Here. Right. So I'll take an original. Oh, yeah, great, great, yeah. I'll just look at you an original. And for you? What is your favorite? Mm, I like the Fothersberry. I will get that one. Yes, it comes from a uh, red cactus in the north, in the, uh, in the um, Badlands, as you call them. And uh, he takes it, he gets you some two, two wooden sort of mugs, and uh, he dips them into the, to the Stott Vats. <laughs> the, the vats of Stott. Uh, and, and Grogenstadt, just for the, the viewer, is like a, uh, it's like a, a warm eggnog that serves as kind of like a tea for the Stilts Guardians and uh, 
being Darasani, you know, they're sort of like nomadic and kind of gypsy-like, and so they sort of pick up different cultures along the way. So it's not uncommon to see a Darasani selling like Stilts Guardian or Marion so kind of it, cuisine like or a milk tea? or something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, it's like a it's like a warm milk tea. It's chewed. It's uh, you could think of it like horchata, oh. uh, except instead of rice, it's like egg. That's the base to it. So it's kind of like horchata or like. Uh, It's creamy. It's creamy. Oh yeah, it has a lot of protein in it. Do you think if you, uh, maybe if you ate solids, you think it would come back up? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. He says, uh, "Here you are." Uh, thank you. Thank you. He says, uh, "It will be uh, two bargains." I uh, pull some out of my little coin purse. Okay. Can you just hand him two bargains? I hand him four. Okay. He takes him and he says, Whoa. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You should come back. <laughs> I will keep it. Yes. The Magis Grogenstadt stand. Magis Grogenstadt stand. Yes. Magis. I will remember it. Magis. 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 Uh, yes. Magis. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I just uh, walk away. Good day. It, and I start drinking the Grogenstadt. Is it too my standard? It's pretty great. It's pretty great. It's not traditional Stiltzgardian. It doesn't have that fullness to like the egg and milk mixture, but what it does but have is that like weird spice to it. Yes. Yeah. It's like some sort of like desert herb. It's like a, mm, you can't really place it. It's cinnamony, but like mm. sedimentary. It's a little bit like a, it's like grainy root. in a way. Um, no, like maybe like a rock shaving or something. It's really odd. Oh. It's very different. Um, kind of like almost like a uh, like a what would it be called like a salt rock kind of thing, except if it was like a different kind of um, flavor to it. Okay, okay. So it's like it's a real cinnamon neat. rock. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. We yeah, and, and yours is the same kind of thing, but then it's got this uh, really nice um, berry to it uh, that's somewhere between like a blueberry and a pomegranate. I'm just kind of like. We continue heading to the Duke's Tower. Okay. I hold it up near my shoulder too, so you know. You can get a, yeah, get a couple there's just in. there's just a couple of, <laughs> and uh, you don't hear anything because it's very small. Yeah, you're holding your drink um, very weird, brother. Oh yes, I was just really trying to uh, take in the scent <laughs> <laughs> and uh, waft it, you know. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, so. uh, whatever is. Uh... It's a ritual I picked up in Kumanohar. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And you know what? She believes you. <laughs> very interesting. So, as you make your way out of the market circle and into the sort of central circle where the Duke's tower is, you, um, the, the Gilded Spire, I believe we called it, oh, yeah. as you uh, head up the sort of long staircase walkway, it's like this ascending, uh, it almost looks like a, uh, not a coliseum, uh, like an amphitheater kind of seating like into the rock as it's going up. Um, however, it's not like a sitting area, it's like a giant staircase. And uh, you're making your way up, there's these nice like uh, hedges on either side of it, and you see Riani like trimming them very feverish feverishly. Um, and as you make your way up, there are these uh, massive wooden doors with like go uh, gilded sort of symbols on it, and on each door is the, uh, the symbol of Gryffindale, of this griffin kind of rearing up like this with its, uh, like on a, on a shield, you know, on, on either side. And um, the doors are opened for you uh, as you approach by two uh, hoose men, actually. Um, who are wearing, it looks very uh, silly because they're just so huge, oh but they're wearing these massive tailcoats, like <laughs> really big tailcoats. Um, and they uh, they just kind of open it, uh, the doors side by side and stuff. And uh, as the doors open for you and you walk in, you're immediately hit with these very, very strong scents of like soaps and uh, like uh, a little bit of a smoke and cinder from the, uh, from the candles. Uh, and uh, probably a couple of torches and um, really the biggest thing that you notice as soon as you enter is uh, the sights which is there is this strange sort of dichotomy between beautiful luxurious sort of almost Versailles style um, like architecture and uh, 
palatial sort of uh, art and, and gilding on the walls and all that stuff and molding. And then there's these parts that are just like unfinished or just in total decay. Like the outside of the building is upkept so well and so gilded and beautiful. It's this massive tower that spans almost, you know, like I said, the two fells are bigger than it because they're actual mountains, but right. like the building itself is almost their height, you know? And so it's an impressive feat of architecture. It's like hundreds of feet tall, but the inside is really falling apart. You can see uh, in through the uh, the uh, peeling sort of wallpaper, you can see where the wood has begun to sort of uh, rot a bit from the, uh, the water and the moisture that's rising up from the river. And in fact, you can feel the humidity in this sort of sticky kind of air as you walk in. It's very warm inside. There's no like circulation of any kind because really how could there be? Ew. And, um, yeah, it's, it's the smell of like mildew as well. Not super strong, but like definitely they're sort of behind all the potpourri and, and, uh, spices and herbs they're trying to use to kind of cover it up. And uh, as you enter, there are a couple of uh, the Duke's soldiers clad in their blue sort of, uh, surcoats with, um, a big uh, spears uh, on either side. And then, um, as you make your way through, um, there is a man who is a, uh, he's a Scarlasian. Uh, he's very old, um, and he's got very thin white hair, very gaunt features. You would mistake him as Stilt's Guardian, but you can tell that he's Scarlasian from the uh, bright red eyes, which you know to be distinctly a uh, Scarlasian feature. They're like these reddish brown kind of eyes, opposed to the, the Stilt's Guardian's like reddish pink. He uh, walks up, and you know him to be um, Bradley the um the duke's uh butler basically mm. oh the von rocks how good to see you pleasure to see you as well Brad. he says uh the duke is waiting you oh good uh up the stairs right this way i have a uh, bones help me up the stairs because we're not going to be able to climb stairs today yeah you're definitely not in that place and uh, he turns and begins his way up the stairs. He's very spry for an old man of his age. He jumps like three stairs at a time. They're very small, tall stairs. So they're definitely not the kind you could climb yourself. Yeah. They're not like long and stretched out, like comfortable leisurely. They're like exercise. Just pick me up, Bones. Just pick me up. Yeah. <laughs> and he just strides up them, gets up them a lot faster than any of you guys, uh, except for Bones, who actually catches up with them pretty quickly. Um, and once you guys, yeah, you're just chilling. But yeah, this dude's moving with purpose. You see a little bit of sweat come off him. He just kind of throws it off as he turns around and he says, uh, through the double doors on the right, uh, the Duke is waiting for your reception. And uh, as he just sort of uh, turns and bounds back down the stairs. How he doesn't fall down those stairs multiple times a day, I will never understand. He's probably been doing it for years, but... A very strange man. So have I, but I still can't get up those stairs, even before I was cursed. Oh, I was about to say. Um, you kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Don't look at me with pity, it's fine. No, no, I'm just... Only one leg. It's fine. I got... I have, I have technically four legs. Damn. She just motions to bones. I have four legs. Damn. Wait, one, two. Where's the four? Oh. My cursed leg is still a leg, brother. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, so we do and count. As you kind of raise your voice, you hear. Well, don't keep an old man waiting. Uh, no. Just keep your mouth shut. I uh, walk in. Alright, as you do, you open the uh large, again, very similar to the external doors as you open them and they swing open and uh, they're sitting in uh, his chair at the end of this very long black table mm -hmm. um, is the Duke Gregor Trouse. He is a um, fairly average height man, but taller than he should be for how old he seems to be. Uh, he has these very sunken features, uh, like most of the people in Gryffindale, very tired looking, uh, aged for sure. He has this uh, grayish white hair and these um, 
very, very dull blue eyes, like a navy blue almost. Um, he has very chiseled uh, jawline and very uh, angular sort of body shape, wide shoulders and very strict muscle. Uh, you can see that at a time in his life, he was an impressive physical figure. However, now, being as old as he is and how clinical his work is these days, you can see that he's let some of it go. Some fat is sort of built on and things like that. But you can see the frame of that if he were to just spend another year or so of really like training himself again, he could really fill out into something like impressive and scary. Um, he's wearing these very tight fitting, very constricting of his form, sort of um, official kind of garments. Uh, they're Scarlasian make, um, and it's very much, you can tell, like, a duke must wear a surcoat, a duke must wear, you know, he's got this, like, ascot that's, like, strangling him with, like, a gem resting on it, and he's got this big-ass gold ring with an emerald set in it that you know to be sort of the symbol of a duke as they all have these different rings with different colors for their state. And um, behind him is this huge fucking sword, like really big, like seven feet tall, and it's very wide, not super, super wide like an anime sword, but like it's wider than most long swords, like probably twice the size of a long sword basically in width. And um, it's got this, like, ice blue sort of handle. It almost looks like it's made out of, like, crystal or glass. And Is it, like, You know this to be... It's just sort of resting behind him in this sheath. Like, behind us, oh, okay. he's sitting in, like, a chair at the end of this table. And behind him, resting on the wall, sort of against, like, the window, is this big-ass fucking sword that you know to pretty much never not be his, by his side. Um, he just kind of rests there, his arm sort of resting on, on the table as he's writing something, and he kind of looks up for a moment and then looks back down and continues writing, and he just says, So, they found you, that's good. I was very concerned that we wouldn't. Uh, I appreciate it. Where have you been? I seem to have been in some kind of mana-induced coma. Hmm, that's fantastic. Your father is gone, and you were gone, and for a week, hell has broken loose, at least one of them. Yes. Many arcane issues have arisen without an arcane investigator here to quell them. Yes, can I mention that there were a lot of things going on? I would hold your family accountable, but I understand the situations in which you've been put, so for now, I will strike it from the record. However, you have work to do. Of course. Um. As you realize, he has just finished signing his name with that strike. He kind of... Your tasks. They are to be completed in no particular order. However, I think you will find an order of precedence based on who it may have come from. I don't have time or, frankly, the means or even desire to properly christen you. Perhaps at some point I might consider doing such, but right now there is much work to do. There is still the matter of my father's investigation. Yes, Which your father's is... investigation is something that I expect to be hearing some more information about very soon. I have my own people looking into it. It's not important right now. Forgive me for saying, but there are people's lives currently on the line. Can I at least know the details? What details? Of the investigation, what they've uncovered. So far, what they have uncovered is considered classified. Yes, even for you. Why is that? Frankly, because you are considered a suspect. Not directly in your father's implications, but in some of the things that may be tied to this. We find it very unlikely that this is a single incident. Many things are moving right now. People are asking too many questions that I don't have answers for. In point of fact, 
I am doing all that I can. I simply just sent a letter. I sent Bradley with a letter that I hope he has already sent off <sighs> to again inform the Null Mages to stay themselves in Hexion until I have more information. The Sovereign wishes to send them as soon as possible. I am trying to stop them from coming for as long as I can while we try to solve this problem before we have to deal with them mucking about our city. Which problem exactly? The Riani problem. The ones that showed up at the Marquis' party a few weeks ago? Yes, and slaughtered many. Why would no mages need to be sent to take care of that? They're, I they forgot magically to appeared. They have a very powerful caster on their side. I guess I forgot to mention that part. Uh, yeah. They overwhelmed, frankly, a very powerful family with many capabilities. Even my Master of Whispers, as he sort of says that, you see just out of nowhere, Silenzi just appears. This very tall man in this blue and gray swirling sort of mask that comes to a point. You see both of his eyes, these blazing green, emerald, very Amerian eyes. Just bloodshot red. Just like open all the time. He never blinks. And he's wearing this long, blue, high-collared sort of coat that's very tight, not open in any place. As he just kind of appears with his hands together, just sort of stepping out of nowhere. He was there and was, frankly, helpless to stop them. Everything happened very quickly, and we hope for that not to happen again. Of course not, but... And beyond that, as I'm sure you've already seen, there apparently is a new plague that has broken out in Lowtown, as well as a rash of new murders, and in addition to that, missing persons, as always, as expected, as well as the fact that there are external threats. Apparently there's something happening in a village to the north that Lovelace is concerned about, as well as some other pish-posh things, but... <sighs> you have work to do. And as I said... I will let you know as information becomes available to you regarding your father. But I pray that you do not waste your time trampling over leads that do not exist currently. It is a sensitive issue, Eleanor. I, more than anyone, know that, of course. Good. Then there should be no problems. I just... How am I to go about fixing anything if I don't even know what the cause was? That's precisely why I do not or wish for you to try was. to fix things. Read over the tasks that I have presented for you. Silenci and I will wait here in case there is anything that you wish to ask. You may discuss them here. So am I to be an official investigator, or am I a mercenary? Oh, yes, of course, I've forgotten that. Because Cardus doesn't think I'm... He reaches over, and Silenci just sort of claps his hands together and pulls them apart, and as he does, in the air between him, just sort of forming almost like a snowflake, little sparks of silver, is this symbol, this small silver pendant which he then hands, just sort of floats over to the Duke who catches it and hands it to you. And he says, congratulations, Arcane Investigator of the State of Gryffindale. And what of my brother? I can't be expected to do all of this on my own. He I'm will be the liaison to the Arcane Investigator. Okay. There can only be one per state. Take it up with the Sovereign. I would rather not. Good. Neither would I. She has been concerned as of late, what with the war and everything. You must understand there are many things at work right now, and it has been hard to present to anyone that our current situation is more significant than what they are dealing with, frankly. 
I wish that these things were easier, Eleanor. But there are many precautions and regulations that must be followed. This is the nature of state. Perhaps one day you will understand. Perhaps one day you will be placed in these positions. Perhaps soon. You are a lady now. Mm. A proper countess. Yeah. Don't worry, these things happen quickly for everyone. I've been gone for a very long time. Is there yes. anything I should know, coming back to the city as a noble or anything? Is there a certain way I need to act or something? As a noble? Nobly, perhaps. <laughs> Do you have a specific inquiry? There are many things perhaps you should know, having been gone for four years, Angela. Anything major change with the houses that I am unaware about? Well... How many are there? Is there still only... There's three per marquee. So in total there are twelve noble houses, including the marquees. Okay. Nothing will change as of that, as long as I have a say in it. These positions are very fragile. He kind of looks over to Silenci for a moment and looks back. He says... The balance must be even. It must be maintained. Too many... Variables could lead to unwanted consequence. Is there any... Hmm. Let's say, like, our house, for example. Yes. What if me and Eleanor were to be wiped out? Then a new house would replace you. That's my underhouse. Or, you know, any sort of family. A new house. Yes. But you would still need an arcane investigator, correct? Yes. Likely that task would fall to very well. So please, don't die. Well, I was very incapable. If I remember him correctly, it's what is not... he doing now, anyways? Brother, you've been gone for four years. Perhaps we should discuss this over dinner. Currently, he is creating quite complex, arcane situations. He's been researching in the Badlands, and I believe. One of the tasks I've given you has something to do with that. Yes, I noticed mm. these are more written as letters. Father never got letters. These, they were more to the point. And so let's see, kind of looks back at him. And the Duke just kind of looks back to you and says, The Lords want your favor. Not all of them. Docker, for instance, could care less, but the Marquis, as well as the Underhouses, are reaching out with you, to you, with the intention of gaining your trust. You are a new lord. It is important for them to make alliances, allegiances, ensure their station. By making us work? That's our job, brother. No, by presenting to you in a very specific fashion by speaking to you themselves instead of through me. Mm. Some of these letters are handwritten by the Marquis themselves, I'm told. It's supposed to be personal, I guess. Okay, well, All right. we will pay visits to them, I guess. Uh, the physic, fair noble investigators, we here at House Grievenhoff do humbly request that you seek out and terminate the vile charlatan who coins himself the physic. His harebrained antics and pagan ritualisms have led to the death of at least seven known patients who had partaken of his ridiculous free non-magical healing. The menace must be stopped. Non-magical healing? Like herbs? I'm told that the man uses herbs as well as strange mechanics and tools in order to try to solve problems that the gifters solve. Why would anyone go to someone with experimental means when they could just go to a gifter? Because it's free. Yes. That's the part you missed. Yeah, a lot of those bad It's a malaria. free clinic. He's holding... See, if this was written in list format with freaks, it'd be much easier to... Okay. He's holding clinics and he's moving from place to place. In Gryffindale. Yes. In the city. In Lowtown. Has anyone identified... In Lowtown specifically. he's from? Well, the Undercity. Does he have a race, perhaps, or... Those who have been helped by him wish not to speak ill of him for what he's done for them. Those who have not been helped by him 
are dead. Oh. Uh, do we have a number on how many people he has successfully helped? Name. There are three that we know of currently. Only three. No so others will come forward. So definitely the negatives have outweighed, outweighed the positives in the situation. I don't think it would matter. Seven people are dead because of his ridiculous ideals. That's fair. Um. You must understand that what the gifter does cannot be free. They're sacrificing literally parts of themselves. I, I understand. What yes. this man does is attempt to try to do something to maybe help someone, and in turn, kill them. Yes. All of Hill murders. Investigation by way of the Duke for Lord Barrymore. While transporting a batch of fresh wine from the northern towns to Gryffindale, some of Barrymore's men came upon a broken down carriage. The horses had been cut free and were grazing in a nearby field, and the driver, as well as the two passengers, an affluent looking couple, were slain. The funny thing is, nothing seemed to be taken other than clothes and food. When the men went in to report this, they found that the village was empty and that about seven other members from it were dead in their homes, most still in their bed. What's the magic about this? That's my question. That's a lot of people to just be slain outright. Well, and beyond that, it might be worth mentioning that one of those people who died was a slayer. Okay. So the idea that whatever it was was capable of catching him off guard and killing him, as well as the rest of the village. Did you have the this village. slayer's name? <sighs> and uh, he kind of turns to Silenci, and you hear... Oh, well. You hear in your head what oh, essentially... <laughs> no, I don't. Wait, wait, no, no, hold on. What essentially accounts to a knock. As you recognize someone is attempting to speak to you telepathically. Silenci looks at you. <laughs> you may enter. <laughs> and as he does, you hear his voice, as he said. Uh, the man was a, I believe, Darasani. And his name was Rasa. Does that name ring any bells? Mm, not particularly. Um, it sounds familiar, but you, don't, you can't really place it. You think perhaps it might have been someone who you'd heard about at some point, but you've, you've heard a lot of names in your line of work. That is very bizarre. Hmm. You hear it as well, Alienor, his voice. Mm, yeah. It's comforting. I, um, that's a pretty big deal, honestly. He was a, uh, what do they call them? A wind dancer? One of the ones who uses the big swords and swings around. It's very impressive what they do. Mm. Kind of flashy, but... Quite over the top and unnecessary, I would say. Especially for our line of... Uh, for that line of work. Um. The Lowtown Vanishings. Investigation by way of the Duke for Anastasia Doctor. Docker. Over the course of the last two weeks, a total of five non healed in citizens of Lowtown have just vanished without a trace. Among them is the son of the Amerian woman, Rosaline, who runs Alienor's favorite restaurant. What's this again? Rosaline. You remember Rosaline's? Mm, um. Wait, y yes, yes. Oh, Anastasia makes... said that that was a. Uh name that meant something to you, that it might help you to have interest in the case. These are the sorts of things that the nobles will attempt to do. You'll find it quite often that they try to um, curry your favor with... By using other people? Well, by but using things that matter to you. Regardless, yes. if Rosaline's son really is missing, that is important. And if they're still alive, then we should find out what happened to them, but Do there's so them many more here. That we have no... Never mind. We'll talk later. Uh, no signs. Investigation by Duke for Lady Lovelace. One of Lovelace's girls was found dead. She was examined by Kenneth himself, who can determine no cause of death. She didn't mention anything about that earlier. Neither did Kenneth. But they probably yes. didn't want to overwhelm us if we hadn't gotten our 
You would remember that Kenneth did say to go to the Duke. You have a lot of things on your plate. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. He just didn't say anything specific about, like, yeah. examining someone. Well, it looks like I actually am going to go and pay her a visit. Mm. Uh, if I do this for her, I think that's enough of an apology. The yeah. Duke just kind of totally passes that by. <laughs> the Sunken Temple Investigation. Oh. For Docker. It's time we dealt with him. In low town, tucked away and mostly submerged, having slid mostly into the river ten years ago, there lies an old and abandoned temple to the on-sea of nature, Ira. The temple is mostly abandoned, except for one creature known only as Grace. Grace has the form of a man, but is not a man. It is unknown what he is, but what is known is that he has protected this temple for longer than Gryffindale has stood. No offense, but Gryffindale has only been standing for a... No, never mind. Mostly, this meant causing the citizenry and those who wander too close to believe it is haunted by way of fictions and small feats of magic. But now he's become a legitimate issue, having just last week sunk a small cargo boat and most recently having killed the team of four river shots who were sent to deal with him two nights ago, leaving their bodies in a strange sort of display likely to ward off any more who would disturb him or his practices. At this point, we have determined that this creature must be put to rest. Good hunting. This is the same thing that's causing the plague in Lowtown as well. This message was sent to us a week ago. <sighs> it has been about five days since then. Things have gotten much worse. I'm sure you've already I seen. Yes. It's, everyone who's gone anywhere near it has become afflicted by something. But sort how of are plague. we to go deal with it if we will only become afflicted research. as well? Research. That is your job. Lots and lots of research. I suppose there are things that can ward off sicknesses. I just need to know Everything what type has it a weakness, is. even creatures that might seem. I would suggest they... returning to Kennet and perhaps checking <clears throat> one of the afflicted. Lowtown murders. No one has been killed yet, though. However, that's something I've noticed by the by the plague specifically. The creature has killed four. There was. There was what. This is me as Emily. I thought there was a dead person being thrown into the river. Yes, but the Duke apparently doesn't know about that. You're the only one who saw it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Kenneth, I don't think, mentioned... I don't Kenneth said no one has died yet from the plague. Oh, okay. Well, I did see a dead person be thrown in the river earlier. I went to Lowtown when I first got into the city just to stroll around get familiar again. And uh, there was a... I believe it was a... There was something... And uh, he was being thrown into the river. That is important information. We did not know that. Yes. I didn't know that either. Does Kenneth know that? I don't know. I don't think he does. We then perhaps this just became a more pressing issue. But the fact that they're throwing bodies into the river that are possibly d diseased, I don't know if that's a very uh, a smart way of doing it. Well, I mean, the doctor has it. often disposed of corpses by throwing them into the river. He often weighs them down with rocks, so they stay at the base. That's, uh, that's different, but these ones are diseased. Does he not understand that that we might get everybody else? I've had long conversations with him. It has been a working issue. As I said, these things are complicated. The Lowtown murders. For Docker. Uh, my men have proven their incompetence to me yet again by failing... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not funny. <laughs> It's By quiet. failing to determine the nature, intentions, and motives of a new killer in Lowtown. To date, a total of three merchants of great esteem and one of the musketeers have been found robbed in murder over the course of the last month, and no one seems to know a thing. Either the killer is a ghost or the Lowtowners are protecting someone. Either way, justice will be done. Be quick with it. I, How do I remember Docker? What was that? I... Who is Docker again? How do it's you... Been... Really? The Marquis oh. of the Undercity? Oh, one of the Marquis. No, didn't we talk to him? We met him before as children? Is this the case? What'd you say? As children. Didn't we meet him before? Yes. Are you alright, Angelo? Oh, yes. He's having a bit of memory loss. He hit his head very, very hard on his way home. I was, uh... At sea. You hear a knock in your head. I come in. <laughs> Does he say come in out loud? Yes. Okay. You you may enter. 
you hear Salinci's voice, only you this time. He says, I could probably fix it. You can see yourself out now. <laughs> Are you certain? I don't... He says, he says that out loud. I don't really like things in my head much, as you can tell. But it's taken a I lot could, of training. If I could solve your problem. Perhaps. We'll have to make an appointment. The Duke just kind of shakes his head. If I may, um, what is so magical about this case? It seems like someone's just covering up for a murderer. Doesn't seem arcane at all. Your father's job was not always simply to solve the arcane mysteries. It was also to investigate the seemingly mundane and determine if they have any arcane significance. So they suspect there might be some kind of magical... There's always suspicion. Suspicion. Are we allowed to place things or under arrest at all? Or like, what's the extent of our capabilities here? Entities of arcane significance. Yes. You are capable of arresting or disposing of at your disposal. However, those that you determine to not be arcane must be turned over to one of the Marquis or to myself. But we're allowed to arrest them, take them into you. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're only allowed to dispose of those of arcane significance. Not including casters, who, if the need arises, you may. However, it is preferable that they are captured. Father and I very rarely actually dealt with um, people in our investigations. It was just uh, a very early mission I did with him a few years ago, and this last one, that there were actual um, people, not creatures or entities. So... My role, what are my limitations? I understand that she is, you know, the house, the head of the house. You act on her behalf as the liaison to the arcane investigator. Any action you take, negative or positive, will fall back on her and the house of the arcane investigator, the station of the arcane investigator. Mm. If you do something negative, it will fall back on her. If you do something positive, it will fall back on her and the station office of the position, as it were. Mm. That is uh, how Father and I's relationship worked as well. Um, if it is too much, I understand. Uh, you shouldn't feel obliged no, to this fill this role. It, it's just, um, I just want to know ahead of time what I can and cannot do here. Of course. I don't want to. You know, you can ask me questions at any time as well. Mm. Um, a, a Marian spice epidemic. Investigation by way of the Duke for Docker. Epidemic? Not the The Undercity has become plagued by Spicers as of late. In case you for some reason are unaware, <laughs> Spicers are humanoids given magical abilities and driven ca crazy by Marion Spice. Everyone suspects the Coleys, and specifically... Salenzi. Salenzi just chuckles, this wry chuckle, just... <laughs> Who goes down there frequently in the dead of night for some unknown, likely nefarious reason. Uh, that was in quotes, by the way. Who gave us Deal this? with it, I, I care not how aware. or how brutally. Who, who, who gave us this one? Docker. That's a It seems three. like most of these are Dockers. And also, again, drugs. Seems like... I, I don't deal with drug addicts. What what would be magical about this? Is Spice is arcane. Drugs. No, that's fair. I mean, I knew that, but like... They've been given spell-like abilities, as I understand. The people themselves are obtaining these. Correct. Okay. Via the Spice, they have been arcanely modified. Have these people themselves been causing problems or just overdosing? They have been causing problems. There have been fights. There have been thefts. Nothing dead yet, I don't believe, but you'd have to approach Docker. Or Understood. Billy. Mr. Rivershot. Understood. Well, if you get rid of the source, they just all relapse. Well, not 
necessarily. There are ways to deal with it. And, um... I mean, since I'm here, I might as well do a bit of investigating. Silenci, do you go down to the Undercity for nefarious reasons to give spice to poor, un disenfranchised people? Yes, spy master. Uh, of course, all the time. It's all I do. I figured. You're under arrest. Mm. And here I am. Duke, punish me. <laughs> and the Duke just shakes his head. He says... I have more reason to believe that it's a sort of upstart. Someone who's come from Ameria recently with a supply of spice. It's only happened in the last week. That's what I was thinking. It's not me. I swear. Not me. The likelihood <laughs> is that it is some sort of smuggler who has appeared recently. Perhaps if you were to go around some of the uh, low-town gangs and ne'er-do-wells, they might be able to give you some sort of information oh, that'll regarding... Oh, that really well. Isn't very well the one that um, is in charge of shipments? Yes. So we should run it by him, correct? Certainly. Unless um, they're not coming in by the ships. What if they're coming in through wine, ca uh, um, wine carts? It's oh. true. They could also be coming on horseback. They could have hoofed it here. Who knows? This uh, is your job to investigate. I um, simply have I a, compiled the list. I have free range to uh, interrogate, yeah. correct? Please limit your violence. Ah. Uh. Don't worry, brother. There are other ways to interrogate. No, of course. I learned. I really soon. think we should talk to Fairy. Well, this is very, very young. I mean, we can talk to everyone. I think Anastasia is someone we could go to as well. Probably. Yes. Your disdain of Lord Fairywell is very well noted in the city's records. So keep that in mind with what we you We were do. kids. It was a prank. It was a friendly rivalry, and it still is to this day. I'll have you know. Silenci again, just. It was a prank. Very friendly. Uh, the Badlands Beast, uh, f by way of the Duke, for Lord Fairywell. That's a good reason to go to Fairywell. So it seems I have need of you. Oh, how to begin. Oh, I just love reading his handwriting. It's lovely. Well, I was on a jaunt out to my new way station in the Badlands, where I am to begin my new endeavors next month, when I saw in the distance perhaps the strangest of beasts. Okay, get to the fucking point. Two of them, each crafted in some mad arcanist way with the body of a leon and various heads charged with magical essences attached to it. The creature is no doubt some sort of alchemical abomination, and where those are found, so too is a mad alchemist of some sort. The whole thing has honestly become such a bother that I have not returned since. Please eliminate these monsters and their maker, and I will pay you handsomely. Earl, fare well. Uh, we'll have to prioritize that one. It sounds immediate. Now, also... Maybe we should um, make a note. That physics person. Oh, the physic, yes. He, he could be experimenting. It's kind of me going off on a limb here. But uh, maybe they're tied somehow. Maybe we could try to put two and two together and find some connections. I don't know. Knock out two things at once. Yeah, I think uh, definitely investigating the physics should prioritize the Badlands Beast, but if we find out there was a connection, I think that we could... I feel like... I don't know. They do it seem similar. Solency just, just kind of speaks up and says, Hi, in my experience, it is important to recognize the possibility that uh, that may not be the case. It's certainly worth pursuing the possibility, but I wouldn't spend too much effort on it if you can't find the link. Mm, yeah, but Both they seem to be pressing issues. You know? And the yes. last one in the list, uh, the deer. <laughs> what? The deer. Yeah. What is this? My men were ranging the lines of the wildlands yesternight when they spotted a deer behaving strangely. Suffice it to say, the beast is not of Sinestria. See me directly for a more detailed explanation. Well, here we are. Who, who gave us this? Did I did. A couple of the rainmakers were out in the forest uh, searching for possible Briani traces. It looked like a deer. It I see. walked like a deer. Okay. And then it turned and it, it ran towards them. And from what he says, it stood. On two on, legs. On its hind legs, yes. <laughs> And it fought him. Did it dance? 
No, it punched him. It does not have... What? It, it hit him with its hoof. Is as he all right? Punching. It, he is very badly injured. Oh. Um, but it was also about two weeks ago, so he's doing a, druid, a bit better then, perhaps? now. Perhaps. It was... A really pissed off druid, maybe. It was complicated. Hmm. Um, you sound very, you could certainly very go to s- I, mm. This is very unsettling for you, isn't it, Duke? <laughs> I've never seen a deer walk on two legs and punch someone. Have you? Are you like... Are you afraid of a deer? I would be. I am. If it stood up on its hind legs and punched me, I would be afraid of a deer. Has the world actually gone mad right now? I am... I have it's genuine... just a deer. I have genuine concern that it may be much more than a deer. <laughs> we are something, actually... something like that, roaming around, hasn't been seen since. No one knows why it did it or what its intentions are. It, if it's not a druid, even if it is a druid, but if it's not a druid, I fear what it could be. You must understand. The un... It is the forest to the south. Mm. <laughs> if that is the case... I guess there is some legitimate fear, you yes. know? Never get to piss off a forest. The further south you go, the more dangerous things get. Yes. Demons have been spotted in Weld recently. Really? Not in large numbers, but there have been sporadic cases that I've heard from the Dukes. That's concerning. If they're moving up from the neutral zone, then uh, there's reason to be concerned. Mm. Perhaps they might even have some ties to what's happening with the Riani. Who's to know for certain? Perhaps. Currently, it sounds important, but it also, as far as we know, hasn't in- killed anyone yet. It obviously has injured one person. Yes. But from what it seems, as long as no one approaches it, it should be fine. Yes. I would just tell your men if they spot it to make a note of its location but not approach it so that we can figure out where exactly it's headed, if it has some sort of pattern. Until then, I think I think my brother and I will prioritize the ones, obviously, with missing persons and several deaths. I agree. Um, I personally, brother... I personally believe we should start with the vanishings because those people could still be alive. The vanishings from. And I'm taking my bias oh, out of this. Okay, yes. Rosaline's son aside, I. That, sh- that is one. These people I'm could still be alive. Also concerned about the. Um, honestly, the, the one that really bothers me the most is the. That creature in the temple that's making everybody sick because it's affected a lot of people. And on top that of that, yes. that thing is ancient and it appears to be getting... It, it, well, we know it could be getting stronger. And I don't know. We need a... That, that's an actual problem. Now that... Uh, so, you know. there have been no problems with it until the Lowtown boys went in there. There had been a couple of ghost stories. Uh, children had spoken about being uh, shooed away by spirits and phantasms. But nothing like, hard, uh, no Voices harm. and screams, crying, blood dripping out of orifices of the temple, things of that nature. But nothing directly harmful until the river shots uh, entered the temple and attempted to, I assume, apprehend Grace. That's that game, correct? Yeah. Dockers... Men. That's the militia. Oh, the other city. my bad. River shots militia. Not trying to say anything controversial now. I'm a noble, so. Yes. You're fine, you brother. It's, I mean, but we all like. Agree. Anyways, so um. Yeah, we should also focus on that. But then yes, there's ditch children. I think we should prioritize children, and that's one good one. And then I don't know that that man on the street seems. Well, I never want to doubt an opponent, but I feel like out of all of them, he is my least concern, but he is someone who could be easily dealt with and found. Mm, if you really try yes. hard enough. 
It seems like a lot of these are taking place in Lowtown as well, so perhaps that would be easy enough for us to split up and meet back at a common location to investigate easier, possibly. I mean, well, with as much going on... Are you just questioning? Are you planning on doing anything? What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean split up? Well, I mean, if we're splitting up, obviously we're not going to be getting into any, like, conflict. Mm -hmm. If we do, don't get in conflict alone. Father and I, we run into too many scenarios where you think you can take it on alone, but it very quickly is overwhelming. You never know what someone will pull out of their pocket. I but would be careful with trying to separate yourselves in the mazes of the Undercity. Mm. It is a dangerous place, and many strange things happen there. Hmm? Was that Solency? Mm -hmm. That's fair. As you see, the majority of the things that are on your list happen there. It is a place I would uh, take caution with. She just kind of like knowingly nods at him. Yeah, he's looking directly at you. Yeah, I fucking know. I know. Never mind. Silencey's right. The Undercity is quite the maze, and it's very easy to get overwhelmed no matter what uh, mm. you're doing or who you're talking to. So Yeah, one minute I was just walking, then I ended up in a river, you know? It's very strange. And immediately, Eleanor, you have flashbacks to being pushed into the river when you were very young. Yes. Um, we should definitely get on this, but um, before we do, I'm afraid I'm going to need some um, better clothes, I guess. I, we don't know if it's good you for me. You smell like death. I don't smell that bad. Brother, I work with corpses and they smell better than you. Well. <laughs> anyways, right. I also need a good trim. The hair's fine, but the trim, my beard. Yes. Right, well, uh, superficial items aside, which of the tasks will you be taking on first? I must allow the uh, Marquis proper notice. Um. We will prioritize the Sunken Temple, obviously, since that has become uh, quite the outbreak. And we don't want that to spread to any further than it's already gotten. Um, but as well, we will be trying to locate the missing persons. And of course, since we'll be in the Undercity, if anything else comes up in that relates to any of the other investigations, we will work on those accordingly. Um, I may end up... Uh, if it's all right with you, hiring some outside help to deal with some of these smaller issues. I think that would be fine, as long as you understand that their actions will directly reflect on your prestige in the city. Uh, that is duly noted. I will keep that in mind. Good. You have leave, then, at my behest, to enlist as many liaisons as would total five, including yourself. Okay. So, mm, I don't count. No. Okay. He is a construct. You have now made me very curious about that deal. And I don't know why I can't get it out of my head, but now... The dangers, the, the possibility of a demon roaming the wilds. That, but then also I kind of just want to see this fighting deer myself. The faster we solve the other more pressing issues, the faster we can get to this fucked up deer. Yeah, I want to see this now. I've been thinking about it and it's just... I wonder, how does it throw a proper punch, you know? I really need to see this for myself. You sound like a slayer. Keep your head about you. You're I am no such thing, my friend. Mr. Duke. Uh, Sir Duke. Now, we will be Mr. off. Mr. Duke. <laughs> It was a pleasure to make your acquaintance once again. My leash. She just bows. I do the same, but I'm like... I like to look at how she does it. Make haste. People's lives are in your hands. 
Understood. She and he sort of leans back and then takes up his pen and begins writing again. She kind of like looks at Sol and see like, let's talk later. <sighs> and uh, as you think that, uh, his voice comes to your mind as he says, I am here whenever you wish to speak, Eleanor. What does he mean by here? Not here, here. Like, privately? I am metaphorically available whenever you wish to speak, Eleanor. Okay. <laughs> As he just steps back, brings his hands together, and disappears. That is terrifying. And that's where we're going to go ahead and uh, end this session. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you.